All right. Well, we did. I think he gave an introduction. Thank you. So, um, first, a quick introduction. Uh, we are part of a group called Atos Wordline EGS Group. Uh, the group does A to Z pretty much everything in banking and fintech. Um, you've seen two of these signs outside. Wordline was with us outside. Uh, EGS was here with us. Atlas is not here, but we do everything from uh, manufacturing and selling POS terminals uh, to mobile banking software products, HSM, encryption boxes, uh, gateways, processors, you name it, uh, we do it. Uh, this one was being introduced today, uh, at, uh, yesterday and today at the event. This is the new generation of post terminals where it comes with a screen big enough that it integrates in it not only payments but also options, sandwiches the person selects with a touch screen and it makes the payment all in one integrated unit. That's the future of what payments are going to be like at the store. So, uh, just a quick financial background, uh, Wordline uh, group, uh, this group is about 130,000 employees. We're one of the top 10 IT companies in the world. Um, Wordline is uh, Europe's number one front runner, the largest payment processing company across Europe. This is, their, uh, this is Wordline's stock price, if you look at it, over the last four years. It's, it went public at 18 euros a share. Today, it's somewhere around 50 to 60 euros a share. So over a three-year period, they tripled the revenue of the company. Definitely a stock that it would, is doing great. They are acquiring companies uh, all across Europe. So they're acquiring processors, uh, central company uh, bank uh, processors, and doing investments. If there's anyone who, who would like to have an investment, uh, you can contact us. Uh, Armenia is, uh, on, um, uh, sorry, the, the four centers that I run are EGS in Armenia, EGS in Germany, EGS United States, and EGS Bulgaria. Just quickly going forward, what do we do? We specialize on the core banking mobile applications uh, domain. In other words, everything to do with a mobile phone, whatever happens on that phone. Uh, we have a family of Ducat applications, Ducat for accident, Ducat for uh, uh, Q-line management, mobile banking uh, infrastructure. We find a lot of banks internally have di diverse uh, infrastructures and problems with different uh, elements, so we unite and combine those. So what are some of our customer experiences that we are gathering from banks? And we are working with over 50 to about 100 banks across Europe. Most of the names you know if I mention them to you. So 82% of customers experiences compet competitive difference. So in other words, the experience that your customer is go is goes through by, by dealing with you is centered to the success of the bank. That's what the statistics say. 62% uh, of financial services firms say ability to drive customer experience is the biggest driver for change, says Forrester Research. 40% um, of all analytics projects will relate to an aspect of customer experience. So the customer is very important. And this is something that everybody knows, but unfortunately when you look at implementation, whether they really do it, it turns out they don't really do it well. Uh, so that's something to focus on. Successful digital transformation, technical developments, you need to hire a lot of new, younger crowd, work group, because your clients are changing, they're becoming younger. Uh, we see a lot of uh, banks that we go in, uh, they have legacy groups. In other words, these banks have been around for 10, 20, 30 years. And when we come today, we go into the bank, we see that their processes and their people are still moving in the old system. So they all want to change, the executive wants to change, but how do you ripple effect that change throughout the organization? That is the real challenge. Um, so banks' internal systems are not digitized. Banks have been focused on the front-end digitization. In other words, they deployed internet banking, mobile banking, but when you look at inside the bank, they are still running old core systems. They are still running old processes. So a digitization of a bank should be inside and at the edges. That's, that's a big shortcoming that we see in almost all banks. Uh, banks are not social. When we talk to them, they say they are. And when we say, okay, let's list the things that you do, social, 
There's not many, that, there aren't too many things that they do. By social, you know what I'm talking about. You know, living in the phone, living on internet, living with the social, the Instagram, the, the LinkedIn's, the, the chats, the WeChats, you know, all the names that we're hearing. But is the bank in these locations? They're usually not. They don't have a force. They don't have a social adherence group whose job eight hours a day, nine hours a day, is to follow, to put strategies, to implement, to measure, to change, and iterate. So they don't. That's something that banks should have. Your new competitors. Uh, banks are our partners, by the way. In this journey, we try to help banks get tools and improve their performance. This is the bank's new uh, real estate. You know, when you go walk down New York City, the most expensive corners of buildings on Park Ave, Fifth Ave, owned by banks. Huge. You walk in today, it's empty. Nobody's there. That's not the real estate the banks are going after. So when you move into this territory on the mobile, you are in the company of some formidable applications, and practically every one of these applications could be a competitor. And guess what? The secret is out. The secret that we all know is now public knowledge. Humanity's migration from the old banking classical system to all the new e-money lifestyle. Seven billion people are migrating and we are all the enablers of this migration. Now everybody knows about this. Everybody wants to be in it. You name it, one after the other. Every week we hear somebody new. Google, Amazon, everybody wants to make money. They all think there's tons of money in e-money, payments, cards. So competition is getting fierce every day. So make sure that when you go into these mobiles, your application looks slick, it looks beautiful, it's engaging, because that same person on the next screen is doing Instagram, on the next screen is doing Google. So you need to be cool, you need to be efficient, you know, you have to have a good presence there, and that's how they see the bank right on that phone. They don't see the marble building. They see it on the phone. The, pre the bank's prediction, pre uh, predicament of transformation, we see this time and time and again. All banks know that they have to do better IT and better products, but they are uh, at a crossroad. Shall we hire more engineers, more software engineers, or shall we go and partner with an outside company? and lose a bit of control. And you know, we live in very strange times. The big void and demand on software engineers has driven the cost of engineers very high. You know, I tell my people, we don't have software engineers. We have Mozarts, prima donnas, 25-year-old, 30-year-old software engineers, they walk every day into the office, they think they're God. You treat them the wrong way, they quit. They can get a job any day. That's the kind of decisions that a management has to do. So it's a critical figure. Both of them are challenging, by the way, either to increase your people in development, because you're going to have to pay them a lot more money than everybody else in the bank, and deal with the, the daily problems of managing software people, or to alliance with another company who can help you. And that has its own issues. So, you have to make that conscious decision and find a way to really deal with it. Um, another factor, AI in banking. We, uh, my people just put this slide, you know, there's a movie, Minority Report. This, this movie is about these girls that constantly are dreaming and imagining what crime will be happening in the future. So the police would go before that happens and catches and stops the crime. Today, banks have lots of data and AI in banking is going to be an essential pillar for your bank's success. And the bank has to do it every single day. You have to analyze your data every single day. Not once a month to come up with a report which loan forfeited or which customer is not paying. 
You cannot do these weekly, monthly reports. On a daily basis, you have to predict from the trends which customers are about to sink and intervene before that happens. The, the tools exist, so a bank has to do that. It's part of their uh, strategy. Trust and security, make your bank a fortress. Again, we find a lot of banks not really doing this. They place a lot of attention on physical security, but not in training their people. The first month that a person comes in needs to go through a complete education. Secure coding, passcodes, what papers to leave on the desk, who to say what. You know, people go out and they explain everything to other people outside the bank. The news travels. So that's a big issue. There are certifications, ISO, like for example, our software companies are ISO 27001 certified. It's for banks, but we did it. Because we need to have the right to operate in this fintech space. Without it, we're insecure. Services, products, and consulting, that's what we do. So our, our proposal is, by the way, that's what we pitch, is to team up with a company that can deliver to you the A to Z image of all the banking sectors, because you may need help in different points, and that's what the family of products and, and companies we do. We do the consulting products and services. So the road ahead is exciting. Let's create it together. Thank you very much.